So today, welcome to the Knox Podcast. I'm Chris Cataldo. I am the content designer and social media coordinator here at the Knox School. So today I'm sitting down with Patty Calambrero from the Visual and Performing Arts Department here at the Knox School. Patty, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. So today I kind of just want to run through a little bit about, you know, what you do here at Knox and, you know, your time here, how you got here, and just tell me a little bit about you and the programs you run. Okay. Well, uh, I have been at Knox uh, beginning, actually, my 20th year, uh, come August. (laughs) I can't believe it. I don't know where time's gone. And um, I am the photography teacher. I also uh, am the instructor for Media Arts 1, Media Arts 2, and and some years uh, there are students that require Media Arts 3. Mm -hmm. I am also the uh, Solarium Art Gallery director slash curator. And... um, I have uh, been a professional photographer for uh, about 40 years or so, (laughs) and uh, most of the work that I've done prior to coming to Knox has been uh, working as a photojournalist, believe it or not, working for newspapers and magazines, doing PR, having my own photography business, and then going on to do weddings and portraits, and I pretty much uh, had been teaching as a TA on a college level. I had gone back for my graduate degree and I had been teaching workshops and BOCES mm-hmm. and, and some adult education. Sure. I decided I really wanted to teach full time. So uh, it kind of happened at the same time almost. I mean, I started at uh, Knox in 2003. And uh, from there, uh, I really started teaching at Suffolk Community College, CW Post University, uh, teaching within the photo program from um, freshmen to seniors, uh, associate degrees, as well as bachelor degrees as well. Cool. Very cool. So it sounds like you've done a little bit of everything. When you first came to Knox, what was, you know, what got you here when you were, you know, were you already teaching at that point, like at at Suffolk Community? I was, uh, I wasn't actually at Suffolk Community College first. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I knew that I wanted to I really wanted to teach on a high school level also, mm. as much as I've always, the, the college job was sort of like the dream. Sure. I didn't realize until I really got here how much I really loved this grade level. Uh, mm. I think probably because the eagerness and the hunger and the wanting to create work and uh, really be very imaginative. A lot of the students are quite a bit like that. Right. And so um, I just really started applying to some private schools. I had been enrolled in my uh, Master of Fine Arts mm-hmm. at um, at Post, which is LIU Post now. It was CW Post at the time. It was CW Post at the time. It had a very strong mm-hmm. uh, photography program. And um, I had some mentors there that I was working with, and I was TAing at that point. So sure. I was, uh, you know, certainly teaching uh, within the uh, college class- classroom, uh, even as I applied here. That's got to be an interesting experience, like you said, because the, the dichotomy between the high school versus the college experience has got to be, it's, it's, a, it's a different feel, a different atmosphere, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, having you, uh, having that prior experience and kind of translating that for our students here is so important because we're, you know, we are college preparatory. So we are always mm-hmm. trying to get these kids in the best position possible to be able to, Mm -hmm. excel as soon as they hit the ground running when they get to college. Mm -hmm. So in your time here, can you kind of describe a little bit, um, you know, you've been here for almost 20 years, like you said, what, you know, you of all people can really speak to what the Knox experience is like, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of just, as an overview, what it's like to be a part of the Knox community, part of the Knox community for this long? I mean, what what could you speak to it? Because I'm sure, Mm -hmm. you know, things change, but some things definitely don't change. You know, we're getting 120 years next year, and, like, there's still things that stand up after 120 years. So just in general, like, what what could you speak to it? Well, uh, certainly on a... uh global level in terms of uh, the Knox community, we've always been really ingrained with the traditions. And it's so nice, even after all these years, to still see that that's so important to our school and what really makes us different. Uh, On a more local level, in terms of the photography program, it's really transitioned so much. Um, I think I was, the transition for me from college into high school, and I still presently teach college as well, was was easy. I mean, I actually brought all of my college teaching here sure. since we are college preparatory. Um, and the program that was here, uh, the person that, you know, who had left, uh, I could see that she had quite a bit of care with the classroom. And I noticed that there was so much about 
leading students in terms of brochures and workshops and such. And so I, I you know, I just sort of embarked on that. And I also felt that my exhibition experience, uh, working with students and portfolios and um, having students exhibit their work was really going to be a very important facet. I see that so much on the college level. And so um, when I first started here, I remember coming in for my first interview and walking down the stairs and I remember saying to the Dean of Academics at the time, oh, you know, how many, how many photo teachers are there? And they're like, oh, you'd be the only one. <laughs> because I was so used to college. And sure. as I came in, uh, I, I realized that uh, we were sort of uh, kind of capping our enrollment even in mm. the photography area mm -hmm. because we had a very, very small darkroom. Sure. We certainly didn't have a film sink. Uh, and everything was, of course, the traditional silver darkroom, right. which we still maintain. Right. Uh, but we didn't have a digital program. Right. And that, uh, you know, certainly has changed over the years. Um, and uh, certainly in terms of the program, it's just really grown tremendously. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that's what I think is so interesting about Knox. Because it seems like year to year, we're just building constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. we're adding more honor societies, more clubs every yeah. year. Like things change and we add so much. I mm -hmm. mean, we... Like you said, we have uh, film one and film two, and then sometimes mm -hmm. as needed, film three. Like mm -hmm. it's nice that we can kind of cater to our students' needs in a way that's yeah. very direct. Mm -hmm. You know, because at a lot of public schools, you might, oh, well, we're capped out. There is no class. Sorry, you right. can't take it. Yeah. You know, and like not to mention the very direct kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, education that a student can get here. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get stuff really customized to help build them way ahead of schedule mm -hmm. in a way that you wouldn't get at a lot of schools. So to me, there's just so much opportunity, especially in the arts. I mean, the arts here are very, there's a lot of focus on our arts department here. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, you know, again, we just keep building and building. You've built out this space. This is your classroom we're sitting in right now. Yeah. You know, we've, you've had extensive changes to, your, to the dark room in this area. We, you've been just building out and building out. And yeah. I see kids all the time on campus shooting their photos, trying to develop their assignments. And... You know, they're trying to flag me down as a school photographer. They're trying to flag me down. And I'm like, no, listen, I take the photos. You guys are in front of the camera. So it's exactly. it's fun, man. And it's fun to see them. You know, w when it comes to arts, you're engaging with content in such a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there is still some book learning to it. Don't get me wrong. But it's so experiential. And it's like you yeah. can read every book in the world. But if you don't shoot, yeah. you, you know, and you're not developing, you're not doing all that work, then you don't know what it's like. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's wrong yet until you start shooting and you're troubleshooting mm -hmm. the whole process. Yeah. So to me, it's just like, it's such a necessity for any school, obviously. The arts is like, everyone needs that creative outlet, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. In my in my opinion, as creative people, I might be a little biased, but <laughs> to me, that's just, just how it goes. I so uh, additionally, um, we were talking about uh, your exposition work, uh, I'm sorry, your exhibit work. Talk a little bit about that and what uh, the programs you run for the solarium and you know year in and year out and what your experience has been with that. Sure. Um, actually, when I got here, we just had a solarium, which literally was sort of like this hallway between the chapel and the living room uh, and had plants in it. <laughs> and they would have... A true solarium. And, true. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. would actually have meetings there. And mm -hmm. um, the uh, gentleman who was uh, the CEO at the time actually came to myself and the uh, art teacher and said, hey, how do you guys feel about having a, a gallery space here? Mm -hmm. And so we said, yeah, sign us up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful for the students and to have some outside art uh, artists come in um, right. and what a great experience for the students to expose them to that so sure. they, you know uh, of course we had some limited funding and so right. uh, a little bit of a shoestring budget but yeah, they yeah. Uh, you know he basically said can you help and so we actually did we ha helped paint the walls sure. and we uh, put the homo side up and helped with wow. those those you know masonite uh, boards and painted them right. and helped install them and uh, and supported the program Right. Yeah. And so um, from there, uh, we always determined before we were using boards that were for student work for parents uh, weekends mm -hmm. in the gym. And the same mm -hmm. thing would happen for uh, both the play and the musical. And this is going back like prior to like 2006, 2005. Right. Right. And then after that point, we were able and we still were having kind of dual shows sure. on some occasions. Sure. But from there, we've really had a lot of outside artists of all different mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as we can, we always encourage the outside artists to uh, either you know maybe hold a workshop certainly have a reception where the students can
can interact sure. uh, with that particular artist, regardless of their medium, and right. also to uh, expose them to what's new and contemporary out mm-hmm. there. And uh, most of these, you know, all, all of these artists are certainly working Absolutely, artists. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, that has also expanded our opportunities for our students to be able to exhibit their work on a regular basis. That's just internally here right. at the Knox School. So it's been a great great experience and it's absolutely beautiful space the way the, the way light, light comes, comes in, in it reflects off like the it. pieces yeah. it's just absolutely beautiful it's a beautiful space. and it's always different yeah right? it's always different so based many on options, the season you know especially sure. different types of work different sizes there's like really endless possibility yeah but the way that place can be set up which absolutely. is so i mean there's so much history in, in houghton hall to start with mm-hmm. and it's just like it's cool to see so much history and then using that still making it modern and like so you have that historic component as well as mm-hmm. It's still here today, and we're yeah. we're using it, and we're making use of it, and we're doing, you know, keeping it alive in a lot of ways, which I love about a lot of the stuff here at Knox. Agreed. Um, and then, so we don't uh, just have internal shows for the art. We also, mm-hmm. you've been really this year, especially, we've had a lot of <laughs> external shows for our students to be able to yes. get their work out in a more uh, wide open basis. Mm-hmm. And what's that been like, kind of helping these kids just branch out, and you know, obviously organizing it. You know, I was St. James and Suffolk. Can you mm-hmm. please tell me more about that? Because sure, it's such a great experience. Sure. Uh, well, we always had these juried exhibition opportunities, but. We used to always have an outside art show, and that was more for photography slash media arts students. Um, And because the media arts ones and even the two and three classes are, as you mentioned, sort of customizable, Mm -hmm. uh, we've had many students that are even to filmmaking. And so we've gone to outside art spaces, such as uh, we had a partnership with Photo Photo Gallery in uh, Huntington Station, actually more like kind of Huntington uh, proper okay. and uh, for many years and so we would uh, actually have an exchange show so I was a member there at photo photo and then I would bring uh, the photo photo work here and okay. hopefully in a way to inspire our students right and then our students would exhibit there and it's it, we went from a location on Main Street to then an area over on uh, Green Street too okay. which is quite beautiful and sure. so it, it kind of started that way and a few years ago some of the membership changed and, and you know and I had sort of moved on as well from sure. the, from the uh, co-op mm-hmm. and so you know we just uh, I, I understand that they wanted to try something different and so that really um, you know put me more in a position to really be looking for outside spaces right. and we actually had a wonderful space in St. James locally and mm-hmm. we were ready to have that exchange show unfortunately COVID happened right, right. and then from there um, we uh, you know I made a a common, it was a funny because I, I known the people at Celebration St. James yeah. for many years mm-hmm. and uh, they're in a position right now where they are having many outside shows. So sure. I sort of, you know, uh, went back to Celebration St. James, spoke to them. They're always looking to have high school students right. and, um, you know, spoke about, you know, we've had long-term friendship with them there. They've right. been really right. um, great, um, you know, uh, Lovers of art and uh, like minded people that are on the same page, yeah, absolutely. Nice yeah. And they really are creatives and um, very much about the community, right? And very much about the students. And so, we've had uh, shows there, right? And over the last few years, uh, really been just sort of like trying to kind of raise up our game a little bit. Yeah. We've been at Suffolk Community College for uh, student art shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, we had students that worked um, within the Five Towns College. Mm-hmm. Um, program and uh, they were alongside college students as well sure. so that was really wonderful so uh, we've had quite a bit of different opportunities for students yeah. to exhibit their work many of them are juried exhibitions where there is a board that decides if the work is going to go up and what's mm-hmm. really wonderful is that we have students getting it so the work is really that good. yeah and it's like not even just going through the paces like the work mm-hmm. is good and it's got legs and that's yeah. got to mean so much for the kids, just to, sure. just the, that sense of validation and understanding of what mm-hmm. you're making matters, and people yeah. are, that that recognition of of your you're doing work that people are appreciating. I mm-hmm. mean, what an opportunity! I mean, yeah. a lot of high school kids don't get that kind of opportunity to get, put the art on display like that and get yeah. even just feedback. Or we've had even students have uh, will sell their prints, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like that's probably the last thing on their mind when they're submitting this stuff in there, and just to. You know, not to say it's about the money, but what uh, that level of appreciation again for sure. someone to hang it in their their own gallery, their own home, their business, whatever yeah. the case. It's like I can't imagine what that's like yeah. at that age. You know, like they, 
I, I got no words for it. I mean, I know. I wish I had that type of opportunity when I was a exactly it's student. A, exactly, especially and, a high school student. Yeah, like they're yeah. so young, and you know, they have so much time to develop their mm-hmm. their eye and their art and as a whole. But man, they're just getting ahead of the curve, and I just it's really proud of them for what they're able to accomplish. And obviously, through your direction, that's gotten there in a very yeah. direct way. But yeah. for me, it's it's. Oh, it's incredible. Especially we have, you know, when you have those top students that are really into it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to have the students that are kind of fresh to it and they're getting that, you know, they're getting into the into the weeds of it all. Of but course. But then you get these, the, the students that are going to art school, the students that are going for that more dedicated degree in college. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, the, like they're just, the time is invaluable, which is I just, yeah. it's, it's which is why the arts are so important in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Agreed. Um, you know, anything else coming up for you guys? Um, you have any other shows coming up or any other programs that you guys are going to be doing in the remainder of the year? We are, uh, we certainly, we're, we're sort of a little bit of a waiting game because I know right. a few students have submitted to uh, the Drexel okay. competition. Um, and there is also a, a couple of more opportunities. Again, the Five Towns show is coming up in May. Right. So that's pretty exciting. And there is a, a local one in St. James as well that right. students will be applying for. And what I really love is that it's not always necessarily about the students that have applied. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a few of them never thought that this would be on know, their radar. Op- or, yeah, or, yeah, or perhaps yeah. maybe they really didn't have the confidence to know that they were sure. going to get in. Sure. And then some of their peers see that they're applying. Yeah. And I always tell my students, just because you apply to a, a juried exhibition or competition, right? Right. And if it's chosen, then it, it gets exhibited. But it doesn't right. necessarily mean the work is not good because you don't get chosen. Of it's about not. taking that chance. It's of so course. important for them to be courageous. And of course, as you know, that's one of our core values. Absolutely. So I'm so proud of them. I mean, they really work their butts off. And yeah. listen, the outside art shows that we used to have back in the day at Photo Photo, mm. those were generally set up for March, April, May. Okay. Okay. It's a whole lot easier to get finished work by that period of time. Yeah, almost all, students the whole are working almost the entire yeah. school year. Yeah. So students were working in October and November yeah, very, very exactly. hard. And to Crunch have time at that point. a solo yeah. show is pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. there was a, a another high school that was a local high school, Smithtown East, right, right. which was showing, but they were showing in, in separate rooms. So mm. virtually, they pretty much had the entire right. room Right, they got its to own themselves. moment to be able to stand amazing. alone. which is With separate receptions, which, which was again a yeah. great opportunity for them them to uh, have friends and family yeah. come see the work and of course mentors and, and teachers and of coaches. course of course yeah. it's right here in St. James and it's just mm-hmm. right down the block so it's just really amazing incredible opportunity even just for local people you know people on campus to get down there and see the exhibited work pretty amazing it is it's incredible yeah we are also by the way um, we are having uh, some internal Archers too. So some of the people right. that maybe did not see the work at Celebration St. James, mm-hmm. uh, that work is going to be hanging in the gallery uh, within this next week, actually. Oh, awesome. That's and great. And then we have a uh, National Art Honor Society, as you're aware of. Right. And so we will be uh, having a exhibit come uh, April into May. Okay. And an outside artist, actually, with uh, Scout Farrell, who's a Incredible. really interesting multimedia slash photographer mm-hmm. uh, who will be exhibiting in March and April and talking to the kids as well. So Very exciting. No shortage in the solarium this year. That's a, that's excellent. <laughs> oh, I love fun. to see it. It's a lot of fun. Very excited. I'm, I'm excited to see the work kind of get changed through again because yeah. the, the one's been there hanging for a little bit, yeah. but it's great because well, once it's up, it's like the buzz gets going again with the sure, solarium absolutely. and people are dropping in there to see the pieces. It's mm-hmm. very exciting. Yeah. Do you have anything else for us today, Patty? I mean, thank you so much for the time. Oh, I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. I love coming down here and chatting with you. It's oh. probably the shortest chat me and you've ever had since me being down here but <laughs> so I do true. I do appreciate it nonetheless and, oh, and for great. your time today oh well, thank you so much Chris I appreciate being here thank you so much